welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where the eagle-eyed among you will note that this puzzle on the screen is, is yesterday's puzzle. It's the Chocolate Banana Killer by Rocky Rower, an absolutely sensational puzzle. The last two days have just been incredible. The Google Doodle uh, on Saturday uh, from Aspartagus and yesterday's Rocky Rower, which must be the best new rule set in Sudoku. Um, but yeah, this is not the puzzle I'm going to be trying in the video today. The puzzle I'm going to be trying on the video is a, um, a link that Mark has given me, um, which I'm being asked to open live on camera, which I'm very happy to do. And I always do with a measure of trepidation because it either means there's going to be something weird looking about the puzzle or something very strange about the rules and or both. So let me just do some clicking and let's see what he's got for me here. We have got oh no, 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 no. Right. I don't want to do that. Rosette by Glipperall. Uh, right. Okay. Well, I know something about this puzzle already because I sent it to the testers about two months ago when it was submitted to us and none of the testers can do it. <laughs> so I do know that. And I think I looked at it on Logic Masters Germany at the time and one person, a ma a <laughs> an incredible number of people had solved it. And that number was one. And I even think I know who that person was. I think it was Jesper Josephson, who is basically a total genius. So if one person had solved it, I don't know how old the puzzle was at the time I looked at it. Um, it's obviously older now, so it might have acquired more solves in the meantime. Um, but this is, I think, not going to be suitable for a video. Uh, Mark's Mark's email. Let me just read it. Hang on. It says something like um, blah, 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 blah. Give this a try. It is meant to be very hard, but it will be a very good video if you can solve it. Well, yes, I understand that. It would be very interesting if I could solve it. But, um, well, uh, I rather suggest that I won't be able to. Um, Glipperal as well. I mean, Glipperal is a name that fills me with fear. Uh, his puzzles are always just, well, they're, they're, they're always mind-blowing. The one we get requested quite a lot is that, oh, what was that one called? It's one I always put off because I, I think I'm going to need about five a five-hour video to do it, uh, if indeed it's even solvable. It's called something like Quite a Mouthful or something, and it's a sandwich Sudoku with basically no clues in it. <laughs> um anyway uh, let's just read the rules of this one i must have read the rules of this at some point in the past but um i don't remember what they are normal sudoku rules apply digits along gray fast thermometers must increase by at least two at a time starting from the bulb end that's very strange right so these thermometers are weird in that if that cell is a let me pick a number let me pick a six the, the thermometer would be broken because this cell would have to be at least two more than six. So that, let's put eight in there. And then this cell would have no valid Sudoku number available to it because it couldn't be nine because the thermo wouldn't have grown by enough between the eight and the nine. So that is really strange. So, I mean, the simplest version, I suppose, is a one, three, five um, thermo. That would be how thermos work. Now, what's this red thing doing? The large red ring... <laughs> A large red ring is made up of five normal thermometers glued tip to bulb, i.e. travelling clockwise around it. Digits must increase with no more than five exceptions. That is absolutely absurd. So, right, so there are five thermometers along this rosette we don't know where their bulbs are or their tips we just know that they sort of you know so that could be a start of one that could be an end of one then that would be the start of the next that could be the end of the next we don't know we literally know nothing all you know is that as you go around the ring Numbers must increase with only five exceptions, which are the resets for the bulbs. I mean, yeah, that's um, that's going to be incredibly difficult. Um, I, I will have a I'll have a try of it, obviously. Um, but I think I think this might be a bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's so evil he really is i don't mean glipperal i mean i mean mark um anyway let me do some birthdays quickly because i suspect i'm going to have to do these twice once now and once when i find a puzzle i can actually solve for today so happy birthday james and thank you for the lovely email you've turned 23 today um carsten you turned 27 a couple of days ago on the third i do i i know that uh, you know i'm late with your birthday wishes but if i remember rightly you did send the email telling us it was your birthday at sort of six o'clock in the evening on the day of your birthday so uh, i didn't get a chance to read it out then uh, you're over there in connecticut oh and i think you were going to ask me to choose the color of your cake well that's a silly question it's got to be chocolate cake of course um kian uh, you've, you've, you've turned 17 today and I know this because your mum Polly wrote to us and said that you've attempted nearly a thousand of our puzzles. That is quite incredible. Um, and you're, you're turning 17. So you've done this at the age of under 17. That's quite extraordinary. Um, so clearly a very gifted solver there. And I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. And Melanie, uh, I'm also a day late and a dollar short with your birthday, which I think was yesterday. Melanie, I hope you had a super duper day. Um, and um, yeah, and of course, an enormous amount of chocolate cake. Um, now, over on Patreon, we've got our monthly reward going gangbusters, which is this, the cryptic scriptures of the secret snake society by some of the great and good of the Sudoku community absolutely wonderful puzzles the feedback we've been getting has been terrific and um very well done to the following who are the next batch of solvers who solved the whole thing it's something like i don't know whether it's 16 17 18 puzzles but it's a lot of puzzles and very well done to Tarek uh, malikyar to Gonz gonzalo garcia i think gonzalo is the super fast uh, solver um michael koopmansch or Michelle Koopmansch, I'm not sure which is correct. Jan Gazelius, Matthew Tad, Yannick Tremblay, Ben Taylor, who <laughs> Ben Taylor, who's, that's the pseudonym of Sonny Jum, for those of you who are into the parody uh, video uh, that Ben made about us. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Sean Day, Nicholas Ole, Pablo Boishida, uh, Jürgen Vokenfus, uh, Ed Caird, Bill Alsop, yeah your your samuel l jackson snake uh snake picture amused me uh Kapitecki and eric maxwell fantastic solving one and all and i'll read out more names in the coming days um but <laughs> i can put it off no longer and in fact i might as well put it off no longer because in about 10 minutes time we're going to be starting another video let's have a look at rosette by glipperal i have read the rules Am I going to read them again? No. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video, um, as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, right. So, I mean, literally, I have no idea how to even, I have no idea how to even think about this. We've got to put in, I've got to put in five thermos around this ring. And I don't know where they start or end. I mean, this is just absurd. Why didn't he? Have, why didn't he have a go at this? If he thinks it's so clever, um, right? Let's imagine that's a thermo bulb. Right. So where would its tip be, and why would it matter? Let's say it was there. Might as well be. Um, which colour should I choose for that? So we'll do bulbs in yellow so now if that's a tip that would be the next bulb and then i suppose it's unlikely isn't it that we're going to have tips on the end of the fast thermos depends how long though i mean the problem here is that we've got no idea how long these thermos are there could be a nine cell thermometer or there could be there could be a one cell thermometer can you can with this rule set is it possible you don't actually let's let's work out how long the the line is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four cells to fit five thermometers into 
So yes, so it's very easy for there to be a one cell thermometer because then the other four cells would just have to, for, sorry, four thermometers would have to occupy just, you know, an average of six, length six or something, which is not really a particularly long thermometer. So there's probably a comedy one, one length thermometer. This is just nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So let's just go, let's just keep going. Let's just, just to see whether or not there's something we can find as a result of this. Let's put another blue in there, another yellow in there, another blue in there. So one, two, three, four, five yellows. So that's how many bulbs I'm suggesting there would be. Five tips, no silly short thermometers. In what way and in what land and in what universe is this in any way restricted at all? <laughs> Not in this one. <laughs> What on earth? I mean, it's just, I will say this, um, Glipperol is a total genius. I mean, this, how do you even think this might be restricted? Because as I sit here now, my brain is giving me absolutely nothing as to how this is rest restricted. So to have this thought in a vacuum, oh, I could put a big ring in a grid. And somehow I appreciate that there is a restriction in terms of the number of thermometers you can put along it. Why would you think that? Not just the number, but the shape. What? And you can, right, I can see that there is, if you view this as a bit like a clock face, and just let, let's put the digit one in there. You can, it feels like there's, there's enormous, um, there's an enormous number of degrees of freedom because effectively we can view this clock face. If we view it going round the clock as, as the numbers one to 45, because each thermo individually could be it could start with a one and end in a nine. It, the, the weird thing is it doesn't have to, does it? I mean, that could, we could have, let's make that a six and then it could reset here. Well, that could be a five or it could be, it could be a one again, or it could be a two. The point is that it's just, it discontinues the increasing cycle. And that, that discontinuance of the increases is allowed to happen five times in the ring. But in effect, what we're saying then in getting from this one to this two is that we have gone through the numbers one to nine once and the number one, which didn't even appear here. And in fact, the numbers in this example, the numbers seven, eight and nine didn't appear in, in the rosette, but they did appear on my, my imagined clock face, if you like, which goes from one to 45. It's just that they're very tiny and they're hidden in this little space here in the grid. Um, but but, but the, the reason for mentioning this is that as we go round the grid and go from one to what, well, let's imagine that was a nine. So it's a sort of virtual 45 because we've got one to nine five times on the five different thermos. Um, then, but we've only, was it 24 cells? There are 24 cells on which we have to fit up to, you know, a choice of 45 different numbers. So each, there's just enormous, enormous flexibility. So why, why is this in any way, how is this even possible? There must be a reason. It's not going to be these short thermos, is it? I don't see how it can be. These these are just not under any pressure at all. I mean, I can see that. Hang on, how do these work? They jump up by two each time. So if that was a nine, that could be a seven, that could be a four. Right, so that number there is one, two, three, four, or five. I mean, that's, again, it's just got so many degrees of freedom. 
If you knew it was a five, fantastic, five, seven, nine. Five, seven, nine, or if you knew that was a five, it would be one, three, five. I was wondering whether that meant for some reason you had to put two and four, you know, the gapped digits in there. Don't think it does. Um, no, no, that's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. So. Ah, uh, okay. That's something, I think. Uh, is that, is it even true, though? Let me just think about this again. I wonder if it's a Sudoku reason that... Yeah, okay. Oh, I've got something. I've got something. All right, the video will continue. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to get turned off, but the video will get will continue. Um, yeah, so actually thinking about that was not such a bad idea because it's given me a different idea, which is these cells. So I was wondering where those cells by Sudoku went in this box. Now, I know that's a slightly strange question. You'll get used to that if you watch these videos enough. But the... Um, the point is that they, well, these these digits here, these very specific digits, I'm just going to give them a green tinge. They obviously can't go in their own column. And there are four of them. So they can't all hide here in box six. So at least one of them has to hide in one of those cells. Now, doesn't that mean that that there has to be a you know in that string of digits there has to be an there has to be two thermos in effect at least i think it does i think it does um although i'm not certain now now i say that i'm just uh do i want to get rid of my no i might just duplicate the whole grid here hang on a minute duplicate is that going to do Right, because I, I want to restart, that's why. But I don't want to lose what I got on the other grid. Um, not, that, not that what I had on the other grid was particularly important, but it was it was just, I, I didn't want to lose all the colouring. Um, so what I wanted to do was to say, yeah, so I think, I'll do it this way, because it's, it's perhaps going to be easier if we do it in reading order. But if I look at those digits there, and I say that there has to be at least one green digit in here. Am I not saying then that that... Yes, I, I am definitely saying that there are, there are at least two different thermometers along that. Okay, and that does... Re All right, that is a little bit interesting. Because... Without that knowledge, we could have just filled this with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and said this was all part of the same thermometer. Now I think that's impossible. In fact, you can we can see very clearly it's impossible because one, two, six, and seven can't all go in those three cells in this box. So the Sudoku has been broken here. So one of these digits at least has to go up here so let's just say it's the let's just say we put one in there what does that do okay so that then that then ends this thermometer and restarts this one But okay, but we don't have to do that, do we? We could have done, let's, let's make it the six. If the six repeats, 
Uh, okay, so let's put a six here. So then, yeah, the, then that that ends that thermometer, and we go four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm not quite getting this. So what's what's this doing? This is saying that. Right, so it's saying we've got to put five thermometers in this this rosette, but every time we have this shape, we have to have, so we can't have any, so every time this shape exists in the grid, and it does, ex it does exist a few times, look, there, 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 and the green ones as well. Every time that sort of rinky-dink happens in the grid, you've got to have at least two thermometers in the color. So that means, well, it's catering for four of the thermos, isn't it? It's sort of suggesting we're not gonna have any really tiny thermos. I think I can, I'm sure there's a way I can do better than that. Because obviously, if all of these thermos were mutually exclusive, there would then be at least eight thermos in these colors, which is too many. So there has to be some overlapping of thermos. Right. So perhaps what I'm supposed to do, let me think about this. What, so what's the restriction? The restriction, if I have to have a repeated digit, sorry, and I know this must be infuriating. It infuriates me because that was a video a few months ago that I made where I literally just I realized after about 15 minutes that I hadn't said anything, not after 15 minutes, but some way through the video, I realized I hadn't said anything for the last 15 minutes of the video. I'd just gone into some sort of trance while my brain tried to work out what was going on. So that video was immediately junked. I did manage to solve that puzzle in the end, but it had to just this ludicrous pause in the middle of it. Um, so I mustn't do that, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand what Glipperl is trying to tell me here. So I've got I've got my big clockwork thing going round that goes from the number. Well, it might not go from the number one, but it goes from my notional number one at the top of the grid to my notional number forty-five here. And and I want. Or I believe that these strings of shapes around the rosette, what are they doing exactly? They're pushing digits further apart than they would naturally otherwise need to be. Yes, so I could have gone one, I could have gone one to seven here. I'm now absolutely not allowed to do that. Right, so the question to ask is, by how much does this forced repeated digit or digits push these digits apart? Does it do lots of damage or just a little bit of damage? So what's the least, right, what's the least amount of damage I can do? Oh, this is so, I'm so confused at the moment. I'm just trying to understand this. So to have the, yeah, so if I put the one here, then this digit could be any number apart from one. And then that could go two, three, four, five. 
Okay, and that would actually be pushing this up more than I need to. Right, okay. So I can do less damage than that. So I probably ought to do less damage than that. Or I'm going to think I've got more constraint than I necessarily need to have. Yeah, because what I'm thinking is... Yes, okay, so, all right, so slowly the cogs are turning. So when I duplicate the number or well, especially when I duplicate the number one we can see in effect this tiny arc of the clock the clock face here is catering for all the numbers that go from one to ten in a way because this is like a ten because I've gone through two three four five six seven eight and nine on this therm thermometer um, in, in, in putting this one in so then then I can go two, three, four, five, but I'm saying in effect the distance I've traveled from going from this point here to this point here is one to nine on this thermometer and then a further one, two, three, four, five on that thermometer, five more on that thermometer, which is like, I don't know if that's 14 or something like that, but I don't think I need to do that because if I push this one here, on the other hand, then this is not, this is only pushed up to three. It's not pushed up as far as five. Now, but that assumes this digit is the digit that repeats. Yeah, okay, so it's the space, isn't it? It's the gap between the repeated, yeah, it's the gap between the repeated digits. I need to, ma if I maximize the gap between the repeated digit, then I minimize, I minimize the forced arc around the clock that I have to go. So, yes, so I don't think I can achieve such An efficient result by duplicating this digit for example because if I do let's just look at this digit if I repeat this digit and I push it as far away as I can yeah then this number has gone from one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four so it's gone it's gone one to nine and then from one to four. Whereas when I repeated the one in this position, I could I could keep this down to only being a three. Uh, right, yeah, okay. But the problem here, not the problem, there are about a zillion problems, but there is another problem, which is that, does it work the same way? if I repeat that one then. If I repeat this one, and I put it as far away as I can, which would be here. Oh, now I'm really confused. Does that work or not? Or have I, oh, what's going on? My clock's going backwards in my head. Yeah, oh, okay. It is confusing, but I think that's the same. I think it's the same. It's just I have to change these numbers, isn't it? So if I do decide I want to repeat this digit and I push that repeated digit as far away along the green string as I can to this point, then I can make this a five. Um, this doesn't have to be a six, of course. Oh, gosh, this is so this is so complicated. This could be I could do that. And the point is, the point is that by doing this, I have achieved the same effect, which is I've forced this digit and this digit to only be a couple of, it's like they're on a fast thermo in a way, that that, that digit is only, well, that digit to that digit skips one digit. So that's the absolute least number of digits. I can 
I can achieve in going from this cell to this cell. But the prob right, the problem, I'm, I'm using it again. But the, the issue is, there's many issues, but let's try and summarize the issues. So what we've worked out is that in going from this particular cell, very, very precisely, this particular cell to this particular cell around the rosette, it is absolutely necessary to go from one to nine on one thermometer and then what and, and and at least to three along the next thermometer so the absolute minimum we could make this digit is a three and then and that would be achieved by making this cell a one so that is the absolute best you can do. And you can see that all of these digits can be different things. It doesn't matter what they are. The point is that because you have to have a repeated digit, the least distance you can travel is from a one to a three or two. But, but the digits have to be two apart in, 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 in a sense. So, right. Okay. So therefore... So therefore, from here to here, you've got to be at least two apart. From here to here, you've got to be two apart. And from here to here, you've got to be three apart. You've got to go eight, nine, one. So how many, all right, now I'm totally confused for another reason. How many thermos have I actually now got in this puzzle? I've got, right, I've got one here, two here. There's got to be a repeat here that's going to be a third, or actually the repeat's going to be in one of those squares. So let's just say it's this one. One, two, three, that's the third bulb. There's going to be a repeated bulb in one of those. Four. And there's going to be a repeated bulb in one of those. Five. That, and you might say that assumes that this is a bulb. That's true, it does. But... Okay, hang on. Can I think about this a different way then? Just in terms of my clock then. So let's imagine my original clock. Let's go back to this grid. My original clock started with a bulb up here and we went round the, the, the rosette to here. And this, this doesn't have to be a nine. That could be anything. But the point is that in, in completing our circumnavigation of the grid, we have, to, we have to go from the number 1 to 45, in effect. Because what, what I'm doing, in a way, is saying that this circle I view as being... So I view this as going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which would be effectively the 1 on this thermometer, which we can't see, and then this would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And this, so this would be, this would include, if you like, the 18th digit, because this is a reset of the thermo. So we're on to the next run of numbers. So, but we know that in traveling each one of the little colored sections, we have to go 
at least yes we have to go 11 don't we we go 11 11 forward along the clock we go from 1 to 1 10 11 and i have to do that four times so that's 44 movements along along the path but i've got to do 45 movements yeah so so if that's right what that's saying is that in going from here to here because the minimum the minimum this could be would be a nine because that would be a jump of two just as i've achieved in all of these so one to three three to five five to seven seven to nine would be impossible would be possible sorry uh, but that would and that would have put made this a nine rather than a one but we know, i know that would have taken me 44 digits around the circle so what i what i suppose i'm convincing myself of is that there are really not many degrees of freedom now because i could have made this a nine but it's only effectively one more by being a one because if it had been a nine it would have been it's the, it's like the 44th but by making it by being a one it's actually is the jump the jump from here to here is three is three digits rather than the usual two step two stepper so by doing a three stepper i have totally closed the circle well in fact i do need to totally close the circle i do need to totally close this right yes yeah, so, so this is this is right this is really interesting it's really interesting i'm not actually sure I'm not actually sure I know how to use this at all, but I do think, I do think there is close to being a very magical and meaningful restriction on, in terms of how this ring works. And yes, I know that means you shouldn't seek me out at dinner parties because the conversation might might not entertain you the things i find magical <laughs> maybe maybe don't overlap with the majority um but what i'm th so what i'm sort of coming to the conclusion of here imagine yeah i mean imagine this imagine this had not been a three imagine that had been a four then that would have been a six minimum that would have been an eight minimum and this would have been a one minimum and that's it you couldn't i couldn't have got this couldn't be any further apart because if if i've made this a two again this couldn't well if i would made i was about to say if i've made that a two again is that true i'm now not even sure i think nine no now it now it works again doesn't it because i've got two difference although yeah no and it can oh gosh and there's a hidden yeah oh now i'm confused i've confused myself again now sorry So in navigating my way around the clock, I have to go 45, I have to move 45. But I know that every time I traverse a colored section, I must take at least, it, it's going to cost me 11 digits to do it at least. So in order for that to work, I want to say that three of these 
coloured rings can only account for a, a two, a sort of a double jump movement. So I, in effect, I'd take 33 of my 45 movements using three of those strings and then I could have one movement from here to here or from here to here or from here to here or from here to here of three move of that would 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 be the extra bit to bring me up to 45 how could that not be true I don't see how that cannot be true. I don't see how that cannot be true. But then this confuses me. That confuses me. Let's make that a three. I love the way it can just change the digits and it just works again. Because in this example, in this example, I have achieved nine, one, two. So this, this is a jump of three to go from eight to two because effectively I'm going eight. I've got to repeat one of these digits. Oh no, hang on, that's not true even. That's not true. If I've got a jump of three, well, I'd still have to repeat a digit, but I don't even know if it has to be the eight and the two that I have to repeat now. Ah, because I've just got to make, oh, that's horrible. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, okay, but if, Yeah, but that's still okay, isn't it? That, uh, I mean, maybe that's the point. I could do this. That's fine. But I have achieved the whole the ringing of the the ringing of the circle. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so this can be a one, nine. And if that's a four, that's fine because that's, oh, hang on. Yeah, that's, uh, this, I see what's happening. I sort of see, I, I see what's happening. I hardly see what's happening at all. But I, th I think, I think if you make this a one, you've got a gap of three from here to here, which you don't need to have. You've intro I've introduced a sort of degree of freedom in moving from this spot to this spot. I didn't have to go from one to three, one to four, sorry. I could have gone from one to three. We proved that earlier. But I, I did decide for some reason to go from one to four. But I know, uh, which I know is going to take me 10, 11, 12, it's going to take me 12 steps along my circle. But I know in doing this to this, I'm going to take another 11 steps. This to this is another 11 steps. And this to this is another 11 steps. So I'm going to go 33 to get round there and then that's going to take me up to 45 to complete my clock and, and the problem with all of the, no, the problem i've done it again but the issue with all of this one issue with all of this is that this is totally not telling me where i can start and finish my thermometers So, so, all right, let's try and summarize where I think we are. Where we are is that I see I'm, this is where it gets very, I'm, I think the logic is okay. This is really I'm about to go into one of my trances. I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I'm, I'm probably still close to turning off the video. Um, I 
because I feel like I'm I'm making a fool of myself now by not I can't quite grasp this I think you know basically what's happening is that as you move between these these oh they're all bulbs aren't they Oh, so that can... Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, ah, okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, I might have got something here. I might have got something here. This guy is a total genius. Uh, it's a total genius. I'm not sure where Glipperol is from, but it's the sort of person you hope is working in the security service somewhere because this is just, uh, it's stupidly clever. So I've just realized that all of these sort of nodes, if you like, of the rosette, the ones that I've, I, I, cause I, cause you know, in each string of color, you've got to have a repeated digit. And those strings of color, I think now deliberately start and stop on a bulb. And none of these bulbs, because they're all on fast thermos, they could never have been nines on real thermos because they obviously then there would have to be a higher digit. But in this version of the puzzle, they can never be eights because you, if you put an eight here, this is just not right, is it? Because I can't, I can't put a digit in either of these cells. I mean, it's absolutely it's double broken. It would have been broken if there'd just been one thing here. You can't put eight there because this can't be a 10 fundamentally. But, 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 but imagine you tried to put eight here or eight here. It wouldn't work because you'd have the same problem. It doesn't need the double, the double ended thermometer for us to, for that to be a problem. So that tells us that none of these digits can ever be eight or nine. And yet I can't be jumping around too much from digit to digit in doing these jumps. You know, if I go one to seven here, for example, I'm taking too many degrees. I'm taking up too much of my clock arc doing that. I've got, I've only allowed to do it. I'm only allowed, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm only allowed to do a, a jump from say a one to a three. I can do that three times. I could do a jump from a one to a four if I want to. I can do that one time. But I can't be doing jumps from one to five and things like that because I'll take up too much of the clock. And by the time I've gone through the other three colors, I will have gone too far around the clock. I will have gone from one to 45 and back to two again or something like that. And that will not work. I will not meet my condition of the digits of, the, of there being only five exceptions to the, to the thingy thing. That's the technical expression for it, if in case you were asking. So, how, how, so you can, I can now sort of see how I'm going to have to do this. Given that when I do the jumps, when I do the jumps from this to this, this to this, this to this, I can never hit an eight or a nine. Doesn't that mean that my three my three digit jump is going to have to be from a seven to a one? <laughs> Doesn't it mean that? How else could I ever do this? And if that's right, let's just think that through. If that's right, if I do have to jump across the eight nine the eight nine problem that exists in the puzzle where you can't put eight or a nine in any of those bulbs. If I do have to do that, so I have to do a jump. So that means that one of these jumps is going to be a seven to a one. Now, wherever that happens, 
Yeah, then the other two nodes are going to have to be the three and the five because I have to do a jump, you know, I have to do, yeah, because because I've got to do just jumps of two for those. So that would work. I would have a one, three, five, and a seven. And that would be it. Now, if that's right, then, that well, that would suggest we could just never do that. I'm just going to delete some digits here. So if we put a six here, my belief is that the puzzle is broken. Now, can we prove it? <laughs> can we prove it? What's this digit? Well, we know. We know it can't be eight or nine. So I believe it can't be anything useful. I mean, the fact is it's going to have to be at least a one, isn't it? Because it can't be, we know that the distance from here to here, because there has to be a repeated digit. There's got to be a resetting of a thermometer. We, we, we can't just go six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, for example. That's just not going to work. So this number has to be higher than six, if you like. Uh, sort of a bad way of expressing it but hopefully it's clear what I mean there but it can't be it would normally we would want it to be eight or nine but it can't be those so it's going to have to be at least one and the problem with that is that that is a gap of seven gap of 11 12 it's a gap of 13 isn't it so this would have to be at least a three. This would have to be at least a five. And they are too close together. That's too close together. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. Because, because we know that there would have to be a repeated digit along here somewhere. And where are we going to put that repeated digit in order to achieve this particular configuration? I don't think if my logic is good, it will be possible to do it. You can immediately see, in fact, it's quite interesting. We know there's a repeated digit along here by Sudoku. Now, can that digit now be a five or a six? Well, if we put a five here, <laughs> there's no, there's, we're going to have to put five and a half into a lot of cells for that to work. There's, there's just nowhere for a five to go. You can't even put a five and a half here. You can't repeat the five. Exactly the same problem if you try and put a six in here. There's nowhere to put a five and a half. It, it just doesn't work. So that means your repeated digit is going to have to be coming from... Uh, if that's a seven, let's try and repeat that seven. So where are we going to repeat that? Uh, I don't know. It's not going to be very easy to do this, is it? Without having... We're going an enormous distance round the clock here. Because if I have a... If I say put a 7 in there, I've gone 5, 7. I've reset the thermo, so this could be anything below 7. So this is a thermo, this is a thermo, and this is another thermo we're now starting. So from going from 5 to 6, we're not going... 10 steps along our thing. We're going 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's got to be another thermo in here now because I can't go. Well, if I go, I mean, if I go 8, 9, 6, you can see I've gone 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is effectively the bulb of a new thermo. So it's it, we, we go far too far around the clock. We're going to have too many thermometers around our, uh, around our, around our our thingy thing you let me get away with that won't you um so well that's this is good though so what we've just demonstrated is sort of that it isn't going to work to have well it, it, yeah you can't put six around the edge it, sorry in a bulb you can't put eight or nine in bulbs. 
but you know your distances are always two or three. So I just I just don't think we need to say any more. These digits in the bulbs have to be one, three, five, and seven. That's the only things that they can possibly be. And the seven, this is the, going to be the crucial thing. The seven, the, see, this can't be a seven. That cannot be a seven. Because if that was a seven, those would both have to be nine. So I'm, I'm on the verge of getting a digit here. Um, now, if that can't be the seven, this can't be the one. Oh, that's a shame in a way. <laughs> that's what everything was predicated on. Um, oh, 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 okay. No, sorry, that can't be a seven either. Because if that's a seven, I've just realized this is a two cell thermometer and that each one of these funny thermometers, the gray thermometers is jumping by two at a time. So if I make that a seven, that would be at least a nine and that would be at least a an 11 and that won't work so if that's not seven that's not one and if if that's not seven that's not five. Oh, this is look we're, we're sort of getting a funny pattern here um so if this is three or five this is not three anymore because we've got to be going up up in a jump of two from this one to this one now this could be the seven and this could be the one uh, or this is so this one is 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 not three or five it's either a seven going to a one or a five going to a seven uh, and this looks wrong no actually that's although it looked wrong it's right if it's a one we need that to be a three and if it's a seven we need that to be a one so that's very peculiar so we almost got a digit but then we didn't So, right, that digit is now high. I mean, it's it's quite high. It's got to be at least a seven. Because um, this is at least a five. And that digit's probably under massive pressure as well. Three, five. So that's, ah, oh, look, it's so close. We're so close. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Right. How could this be a five? I've got a digit. I think I've got a digit here. I have. I've got a digit. <laughs> I've got a digit. It's taken me an hour. But I've got a digit. Right. If this is a five, that's a seven. But both of these are nine. Because of the weird thermos. Because if that's a five, whoopsie, if that's a five, that has to be at least seven. And that, therefore, to be a Sudoku digit has to be nine. That will be a seven. That will be a nine. That's wrong. So this is wrong. And if it's wrong, what we need to do is to say that this digit is a three. Because it can't now be a five. So this is the five. This is the seven. This is the one. This is a nine. Because it's got to be two greater at least than seven. This is not nine. Three, five. Oh, that's not the reason. I've got five digits now. And. Okay, that's, uh, that's not really that important, is it? That that's at least a four. Um, Wow. Wow. I sort of feel like, what if I can't do it now? <laughs> what if I can't do the puzzle now? This will never get seen. I almost want to stop and just say, well, look, I got this far. I don't know what to do now. What on earth do we do now? It must be, it must be here somehow. Okay, yeah, I've got to have, yes, all right, let's think about, yes, I've, I've, I've sort of forgotten this, but because it was it was only about half an hour ago in my life, um, but let's not forget 
the fact that when we had a jump, an efficient jump around the circle, so when we restricted our jump around the color by as much as we could, which we knew we, need, we, knew we needed to do three times, the way that we achieved that was by pushing the repeated digit as far away as from, from, from itself as we could on its little arc. So, so either that cell is a seven or that cell is a five. I don't think that does it though, does it? I was thinking maybe it was going to have some impact on this cell. If that's a seven, then that's a six. Oh, that's weird. Oh, hang on, that's weird. Is that right? So, right, in order to have the correct gap between the 5 and the 7, there's a repeat either here or here. Now, if this is a repeat, if this were on repeats, we put 7 there, that has to be 6. And then this can be anything below 7. Um, or is that true? Well, no. no Yeah, well, it, no, it could, I think it, well, it actually couldn't be eight in this instance, but imagine that was there. I think it could be eight. The point is that there's, there is a bulb somewhere here that resets the thermo catalog. But what I was thinking is, is it necessary? Because because the the alternative to that, sorry, I'm being um, st I'm starting to gibber again. The alternative to that we know is that this one goes here. So I'm, uh, the reason I'm just pausing, and that would make that a six. Now, if that's true, there's always a six in one of those two cells, which is doing massive work on this thermo, especially as that's a weirdo thermo. Um, but now I'm even questioning everything I've done. I don't think that can be a five, can it? It just doesn't work. But now, now, now we get to it. I can't remember why it didn't work. In fact, let me just, I'm not going to try it there. I'm going to try it with the one thermo because I find it easier to think about the thermos in terms of ones. Yeah, that can't, yes, it can't work. It can't work. And now, it, and, and actually that has helped me to remind myself as to why. Because if you do it this, if you do it this way round, you can see you're going far too far around the circle here, because we're going to increase to whatever this number is. So that's going to be nine around whatever this number is in order to get to the one. You know, we're going, we're going nine, aren't we? And then we're going to inc We can't fit two twos in here, so we're going to go to one to nine again, and then we're going to go up to three again. So if we're getting from here to here, we're going sort of 20 steps around the, around the clock, and we know we've got a maximum of, was it 11? Well, we've got 11, we can go 11 steps three times, which we now know where they are, and 12 steps once. So this so this is not a one, this is what that's telling us. But also, it is reconfirming the fact, yes, we need to have our repeated digits on, on, the, on the sections where we're only jumping a very small, the, the least amount. We have to push our repeated digits as far away as we can. So if we did have a five here, the point is, he says, trying to work out what the point is. The point is I can go five, six, seven here. It doesn't matter almost what these are, providing I don't have, you know, multiple thermos along here. I'm allowed to go something like four, three, two. That would be fine. 
but I could go six, seven, eight. That would also be fine. And then I'd go one, two, three, four. The nine would be five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, and, and I'm, uh, the point is, I'm, I'm not going too many steps along my, along my path by doing that. Sorry, and I'm sure this is all completely clear to many of you, but it it, it helped me to re re-establish that point in my mind. So, so right. Well, this is good. This is good for one reason, which is that. which is that there is a six in one of these positions I'm going to stay now because there has because we know that this has to be as efficient as we can and the repeated digit in those four digits which has to appear up here has to therefore be as far away from itself as it can possibly be it must be one of these that's repeating and it must be as far away from itself as it can be so either the seven is going up here or the five is going here now whichever one of those happens if that's a seven or if that's a five, you can see that it forces a six either here, if this is a seven, or a six here, if this is a five. That's how we get efficient. So this little thermo now doesn't have five, six, or seven on it, yet it's got to obey its rules. It can't have five, six, or seven on it. So this cell must be eight or nine, mustn't it? Because if that was only a four, this would be a negative number or a zero. So that's that can be anything. In order for this thermo this cell not to reach the value of five, this cell cannot be as high as three. So that's got to be a one or a two, that's got to be a three or a four, and that's got to be an eight or a nine. And that's absolutely barbarically useless. Wow, you rotten thing. Right, is there something we can do then from the fact that these three cells, I've just, I should have probably have thought about this earlier, but I've only just thought of it now. Those three cells, I'm gonna give them their own color. Bah, horrible colour. Well, it's a lovely colour, but it's um, it's a little bit dark. Oh, and that's a silly colour choice. Brown. I don't really like brown. It's a bit too, um, a bit too. Let's use blue. Yeah, those three cells can't appear. Whatever these digits actually are, they can't appear anywhere along this sort of pink string because they see all, all of the digits. I don't know what that means even. So does that, right, so if we... It must mean something, come on, use your brain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I'm not understanding how to use this at all. I think there's a point here around the fact that I can't repeat the blue digits in the pink digits. That my brain's just left the building. Um, feels like that really matters to me. It really does. I know that. I know there can't be two repeats, don't I? There were two repeated digits, I have too many thermos. So there's one repeated digit, which is either these, let's say it's that one that's repeating there. That's one of the digits one to nine. That's the second of the digits one to nine that, that cannot now repeat here as well. That's 
third, fourth, fifth, that's six. Third, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it sort of feels like I can only have one of one and two, one of three and four, one of eight and nine along this line. Gosh, I can almost not put a nine on it then. Nine, nine could go there, couldn't it? Problem is, if it's if it's not this that's the break in. If you look around the grid, nothing else. Although I've got this similar line here. This line's not under the same stress as this line because I've not got a given digit here. I've got less information on this side than I have on this side. And this, which is the magical three-step three step jumper, is under even less pressure than yellow, green and pink because in this one, we haven't got a... We haven't got a the foggiest idea about where the repeated digit is because the, remember when we were just did the whole logic again on the repeated digit positioning the reason that we know the five or the seven repeats in pink in these specific positions is because we have to be super efficient with how the third how many how far around the clock arc we're allowed to go here we don't need to be as efficient so if the seven does repeat it could repeat here. If the one repeats, it could repeat here. Or probably that could repeat. And if, But if that repeated, it would have to repeat far away from itself. Um, okay. Uh, so what do we do then? Do we... That's five. If, that's, if that is six... And that is seven. That would have to be. Oh, hang on. Let me just think about that. Right. If that's six and that's seven, what's that? Ah, ah. Okay, that's interesting, because because this digit can't be eight now because eight's going to go up there and it can't be nine so it's at least one that digit's now not able to be that's going to be a two so that's going to be at least ah this is broken <laughs> this is broken what Wow. Okay. I think, I think this is broken because I don't think that digit has a value. And the reason is, it's really hard to see. But if that's a three, that's become a four now because of this weird thermo. And what is that digit? It's got to be higher than three and below seven. Because otherwise we've got another thermo joining the party down here. So what can it be? Well, it can't be four and it can't be five and it can't be six. So it doesn't seem to have any possibilities that are useful. So let me just think about this again. So that was all caused by effectively this being a seven. So we're saying that this is not the repeat, I think. We're saying that this is the five has to repeat. Let me just, I'm just going to double check this. If this is seven, this must be six, or we've got another thermo problem. We're going too much, too many arcings around the thing. So if we say the seven is repeated, that is a six. This digit now, well, now this is eight. So this digit has to be at least one. It has to be at least one. And what I've got, my challenge here is to find a place that this, or a, a legitimate digit for this to be. Maybe that's a different way of attacking the problem. So let's try that with the four now. Which is going to make this a three. 
and I can't make this a one-two pair. It's weird the way it works. It just doesn't work, does it? It just doesn't work. Or oh, okay, so four didn't work. Let's try three here. If we try three here, this becomes a four. This can't be eight, nine. So the only two digits available here are one and two, and that's going to break this as well. It just doesn't work. That is so strange. Let's try. I'm just going to keep going because I just want to absolutely bulletproof it. I don't think it works, but I mean, it's now even more broken. It's now even more broken. This, this simply has no possibility to be anything now that's useful. <laughs> we've really closed it off because this can't be 8, 9, 1. And if it's 2, we've got another thermo. We've got second thermo. And again, we're jumping too far around our arc. Wow, 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 wow. So this is not right. So this, this is telling us this is not the repeated digit. So that is the repeated digit. That's a 5. That's a 6. So that's not a 6. now so now i'm guessing we think about this digit and we take a, we take a lot of thought and say what could that be it's i'm sorry <laughs> the pregnant pause <laughs> i'm just trying to think about it. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry if you're getting cross with me there. Um, it's because I'm trying to decide whether I want to put... I want to put sort of... So, I mean, clearly this has to be at least an 8 now, doesn't it? It does have to be at least an 8 because it can't be 6 or 7. So if that's at least an 8... I'm not allowed to put a 9 in any of these cells. Let's get rid of that 7 pencil mark. So this digit is at least a 1. Now this digit now can't be a 2 because that would break that cell. So that digit's at least a 3. So now in terms of this weird situation we've got going on here, each one of these pencil marks we're saying is at least its value. Right, so this is at least a 3. So it's either 3 or 4 because it can't be more than 5. This is at least a 1. Hmm. So it could be a 1, it could be a 2. It can't be a th I was just about to say it could be a three, but it can't be a three now because this has become a three four pair. So I can't put three four on this on the on in these two cells. Yeah, that makes sense actually. Sort of in this strange world we're living in, that does make sense. So this has got to be either eight or nine. Now and again, this can't be one. Because if, if we made this as high as 1, this would have to be 2 now, because we know this can't be 3. And then that cell would be broken. So somehow, some way, we've got some weird restriction going on along this line. I've got a 3-4 pair here. is probably putting some pressure on this thing. Uh, maybe Sudoku though first. Let's have a look at Sudoku. It's got to be a seven in one of those cells and a, uh, and a six, yes. And a six, that is true. So there's got to be a seven and a six up here. Okay. So I don't think this is very restricted actually. I think that can still be five, can't it? Five, seven, nine looks legitimate as a way to fill this thermo.
So I think what we're going to have to do is to look somewhere else. And I, I again, I've just got no good feeling for where that needs to be. I wish I, I wish I understood this better. I, I, I hate, I don't want to look at that. That feels far too difficult to understand. I think probably I've got to look at this one. But maybe these, these pencil marks here are somehow important. They've got, I've got no thermo here to, to use. Have I learned anything? Three here. So this square here is at least a five. It's five, six or seven, isn't it? I think it's going to have to be this one. I'm just sorry. And I know I'm taking my time about this, but I'm just, I'm trying to think about can I make better use of what I've already got? It feels a bit sad to abandon the east side of this grid now when we've got so many, you know, at least pencil marks in it. <laughs> um, I can't, I, I don't see, I don't see how to do it though. So I think I am going to have to come over here where Now it's going to be the same, isn't it? So we know that either the three or the one is the repeat in yellow. So if it's a three repeating, I've got it there. If it's a one repeating, I've got it there. And whichever one of these is true, if that's a three, that's a two. If that's a one, that's a two. So again, okay. Okay, so that is better, isn't it? So this thermo, maybe I should have started with this actually, because no, actually the ones, twos and threes feel more natural all of a sudden. This thermo is tricky because you can't put one, two or three on it. So that cell is at least a four, which means that cell is at least a six, which means that cell is at least an eight. And that means I've got an eight, nine pair in row four. And that means that cell, this can't be five, seven, nine anymore. So that cell's low. Because because I can't put three or three or four in any of these cells. So the highest value of this is seven. Doesn't this have to be a five? Am I going nuts? I think I might be going nuts. This cannot be. It cannot be greater than five. So it's either equal to five or it's, and it's not three or four. So it would have to be two, but that would make that a zero. That is a five, good grief. That's five, that's seven. This square is a one or a two. That's not a seven. Are you, are even simple things now are becoming difficult for me. I'm so confused by this puzzle. I cannot tell you. Right, so do I, do I now know that that is a four? Is that true? If it's not four, what is it? It's not five. Can it be six, eight? No, it can't be. That's a four. Good grief. Okay. So this is now at least a six, but could be seven. He says, hoping it's not true. Um, no, nah, I think it can be Bobbins. Bobbins, Bobbins face. Uh, this is going to blow up my computer as well. But if I do manage to solve this, it's going to be about a seven hour solve. <laughs> what? Oh, that would be a dis Imagine if this gets lost because my my computer goes wrong. I'm trying to process the immense madness of a glipperal solve. Uh, come on. Okay. Right. So what have I learned now? Have I learned something really useful or not? I do know, look, there's a five in one of those cells because of Sudoku. 
I do know there's a four in one of those cells by Sudoku because of this three, four pair. Okay. Um, two, three. I don't know. All right, let's try. Let's try the same thing we did last time and see if there's any magic to be found along this the line. So this is a one. So that's at least a two. That's at least a three. Don't see why that's not possible. Then this cell is the first cell I think that is under pressure. Now that cannot be four or five. So that is at least a six. Now that cell then can't be seven. So that's, uh, can, oh, hang on, that can't be eight or nine either. So that would have to be one. And that would make that a two again. Ah, this doesn't work. Uh, that Well, it must work somehow. Oh, gosh, this is really strange. Wow. Even now, this is bafflingly, it's bamboozling, isn't it? It really is. So let's just go through that logic again very carefully. So what I did was I said, okay, what's the minimum value of this cell? And I worked it out. It's a two. The minimum value of this cell is therefore a three. So I'm keeping the digits down as low as I possibly can. Now, in doing that, I discovered that the minimum value, the minimum value of this digit is a one. Well, how can it be bigger than one? If it's bigger than one, then we've got another reset of thermo here. If this is a five, for example. Then five is greater than three. So the, the problem is we go one, two, three, six, five. So that's a, that's a new thermo. So we've sort of cycled through the nine. And then we've got to have another one here. We're, we're going up about 20 again in this sequence. So the only way this works with this being a minimum value of one is if it is a one and that is a two. But making this a two, of course, stops this being a two. I might say, oh, that's a problem. It's not a problem. That was a minimum value of two, remember? So that this is okay. But we have now identified that the repeated digit is in fact the one. So we can't have two repeats. So this is not a three. It's not really surprising. Uh, okay, one. Uh oh, that is doing, that's giving me some Sudokuage. That's now become a two, so that's become a one. It's doing nothing, is it? Ah, it's nearly doing something, but not enough. It's quite exciting to even get any digits, actually, at this point. I, every time I get a digit, there's a brief moment of euphoria where I think I'm going to suddenly understand everything, and then that goes away. Um... Okay, so I think I've probably, I think what I've probably got to do is almost pencil mark this entire line now just to see whether there's something weird and wonderful happening on it. So let's think about it. Yeah, well, yeah, this is, this digit is now under massive pressure. It can't be two, three or four. So it's, uh, it could be five. That's the least it can be. It can't actually be six, but if it's five, this is at least six which I think it can be, then that can't be seven if this is six, because that will break. So that's got to be at least eight again. Right, so this, so now we can see what's sort of going on. This has got to be at least eight, can't be greater than one. So that's got to be eight or nine. This has got to be six or seven. And I don't see how that can not be five, because if that was not five, it would be seven at least, and that would have no value. Again, let's just check that. If this was seven, this would be eight. That could be nine. We've got to keep them below the one. So eight, nine, and that's broken. So it doesn't work. So that is five. That's not five. This is a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. So I now know, what's this five doing? That's a Sudoku pencil mark, so that is a five. 
5 is now in one of two places only, in this box up here, which is almost exciting. These two digits are now 2 and 3. Oh, 2 and 3. There's a 3 looking at them. That's a 3, that's a 2, so that's a 1. Woohoo! I mean, one of the most remarkable things about this is that it still hasn't broken. <laughs> it suggests the logic is correct. Um, six, seven, eight, nine into these squares. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be putting any pressure on this little digit down here in its silly little thermo. Um, come on. Come on, you annoying man. I'm talking about me, not Glipperal. Why can't you just finish this puzzle off now? There's a... Ooh, Oh, ho, ho, ho. there's a 3-4 pair I've just found here. So doesn't that mean I know that digit? That digit is a 6. By Sudoku. It's a naked single. So these are from 7, 8 and 9. So that digit is 6, 8 or 9. Bobbins. 6, 8 or 9 is not enough. That was not enough. I was hungry and you fed me not. I can hear the god of history. That's a fabulous Martin Luther's King speech, if you've never listened to it. I can hear the god of history saying that was not enough. I was hungry and you fed me not. Ah, uh, okay, so what does this mean? Is it this one now, isn't it? It's going to be this one somehow. Even without the thermo in the middle, somehow now it must be restricted. I don't fancy this, but I don't think we've got another choice. We're going to have to investigate it. Can we do anything better? Is there some way I can avail upon Sudoku? I don't often want to avail myself of Sudoku. Uh, let's Sudoku do the magic for me, but I am desperate. Five. Oh, oh. Ah, yes, yes. Right. Five can't go there. Now this is, this needs to be an efficient efficient bit of green. Now if it's an efficient bit of green that means its repeated digit must be either the 3 repeating here or the 5 repeating there. That's got to be a 3 repeating here. That gives me a 3. Ah! No! Gives me a 3 and a 4 there. 3 is in one of those cells, probably on the naughty thermo. That's a 4 by the power of magic and the fact that 3 and 5 need to be divided by 4 on a thermo. Um, okay. So, all right, we can't have another repeated digit on this thermo because that's not going to work. We're going to have too many thermos. If I try and put a four here, for example, uh, you can see that this is going to create a thermo here and another thermo there and another thermo there. That's far too many for the gap that we need this green arc to take up on our behalf. So the four in this box is in one of those two cells, which means there's a four here by Sudoku which means there's a 4 down there by Sudoku. I... Da, 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 da. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> Every digit is a hard one battle. Um, <laughs> I'd be so upset if I managed to solve this and the comments are full of people saying, yeah, it's very straightforward, five minutes. Rattle through it. Don't know what the problem was. Well, I'm going to blame, blame my substandard and uh, illness-affected brain. Um, 
Hmm. Oh, dum dum dum. This doesn't look very good, does it? I can't see how to do it. We're going to have to pencil mark this thermometer again. Mark, Mark would love this bit of the puzzle um, because it's just about pencil marking thermometers with weird things about like what the next digit can possibly be. Now, that uh, actually that can't be a one now, can it? That would really make this thermometer very hard, or not? The, I mean, when I say this thermometer, I've no idea actually what the thermometer is. But if we did make this a one, we, we can only have like, you know, we can't have loads and loads of thermometers up here, but we can, we could only put one, two in there. So there's going to be a second thermometer in here and that's going to be too many thermometers. So in fact, that's the one, which means there's a one look in one of these cells and a one in one of those cells. I've got one, two, three, four, and five in this column. So I need sixes, sevens, eights, and nines in here. Whoa, and that has put pressure on this digit. Right, that's going to be important. Yes, that can't be nine. Because then that would have to be a one, two pair to keep the thermometers down. And the one we know is in one of those cells. So that's not nine. If it's eight, you could put, that would have to be a two. Oh, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible, but not impossible. Oh no, hang on, Sudoku. Yeah, Sudoku, it's my friend at last. Thank you, Sudoku. There's a two in one of those cells. Right, how could this be an eight? If that's an eight, these digits, this could be a nine, that is true. Uh, that would be fine. But then this has to be a one or a two to make sure that we aren't making multiple thermos and it has no option to be either a one or a two. So that's not eight. This is really difficult even for this to be a seven, I think. If this is a seven, oh, I see, I can just go eight, nine then. Why doesn't that work? Seven, eight, nine. That would make that cell, seven, eight, nine would make that cell a six. Ooh, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that feels incredibly restricted. If this is a six, seven, so that would be seven, that would be six, that would be five. Right, here's, here's a nice little point. Here's a nice little point. In, in, right, in fact, I'm gonna, I am gonna label these cells up now. This has got to be higher than six, so it's got to be seven eight only it's the only options it's got so this has got to be eight or nine because we can't use ones and twos and nothing else is available that's below a three so this is a little string of niceties but the point i was thinking about was that there's no five in these niceties so the five is actually in one of those two cells which means that there is a five up there which means that that is not a five that was that was all it was um, now we know, all right, we know that those three digits all see this digit, don't they? Which I was just looking at that with making this seven, eight, nine, but whatever these three are, they see that one. Mm, I don't think that does very much. Uh, it, well, it means there's a six in one of those two cells because effectively this is a quadruple. Um, whatever those three are, see that one. So we've got to make sure that they're all different digits. I don't think it actually does anything else apart from that. Right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is seven, eight, or nine. Whoa, I wanted to put, what did I just do then? I wanted to type seven, eight, nine, and I was suddenly seeing an eight, nine pair thinking, how did I get that when I said that cell was a seven, eight or a nine? Right, so now I've got, ah, now I've got a seven, eight, nine triple in this column. So that cell's become a six out of nowhere. So that's a seven. So that's a seven. Look, I've got an eight, nine pair here. So that's become a six, six, six out of those. Is this doing some stuff? Is this doing some magic for us? Not sure. I can get rid of seven from there and seven from there. I don't think that 
does it. Um, okay, look, in this column, I haven't, these, these squares are two, three, and four. Oh, that's probably been available for ages. I don't think that's even interesting, is it? Six, ah, no, hang on. What about this column? That's a six, seven. So eight and nine have to be in that string of digits. So that's got to be a six. So that's, ah, so that's the six. Okay. And now I've got an eight, nine pair here. So that's become a seven, which is not putting enough pressure on this digit, but it's still a very welcome addition to the digits in the grid. I will not sniff at you. Any digit we get in this grid is a triumph. Okay, so these digits now don't include six. That can't be a nine. That can't be a seven. I've got an, okay, look, what do I need along here then? This, this is six digits in effect. These have got to be ones, twos, and sixes. So that's a naked single. That's a two. This is a one, six pair into those two squares. Oh no, it's not, it's a six. How can I not see that? That's so inept. Uh, one and six go in. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> that's good, probably. Uh, one, oh, one goes in the corner. I haven't even been looking. I could still get a three in the corner down there. Um, would be, would be worth, I feel anything. I would happily sing if it would let me to finish the puzzle. Uh, this is a three or a four by Sudoku on this column. That's all I was doing there. Nothing clever. This all feels very cluttered on this right hand side now. Three, four, seven and eight. So that square is three, seven or eight. That square is three, four or eight. At some point we are, I know we're going to have to engage with the naughty line, which is going to be full of nastiness. Although Mm. Oh, I, I, I was about to say something that was totally in it, totally and utterly stupid. I refuse to do that, so I'm not even going to mention what was in my head there. I can see there's no one down here now. So one is not the repeated digit in the purple, which is mildly interesting. So if seven is the repeated, can seven be a repeated digit there, actually? I see, that seems too close. Because... Ordinarily, we know in order to achieve a jump of three to five, say, we had to push the three as far away as we could. And that just about gave us. So if we'd put the three here, this would have been a six and that would have achieved the difference. If I put the seven here, eight, nine, there's no, there's no way of doing it to get to one here. That cannot be a seven. It simply will not. It's, it's not it's not a repeated digits that's far enough away from the seven, even though the, there is an extra degree of freedom on purple, it's not that that great. So that's forced to be a seven, which seems to make that a one and that a one by Sudoku. That seven's given me an eight. Oh, actually that's given me an eight here and a nine here and a seven here. Come on. Come on. Two, three and four. Oh, you rotten thing, you rotten thing. Putting no pressure on this cell at all. No, ooh, nine is, ah, nine is the repeated digit. Oh, this is great. This is great. Yeah. Okay. Nine is the repeated digit now down here. How close to this nine can it be? The answer is not close at all, is it? It has to be here. Otherwise, I'm taking too many thermos up. If I put the nine here, there's got to be another, th you know, you can't go seven, eight, 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 nine. So you'd have to go seven, I don't know, something. You're going to have to have another thermo in that string if you make this a nine. And, and going from here to here, you're taking up all of the digits one to nine in two cells. And we know that's not going to work because we know each, again, each little color has to cope for, cater for an either 11 movement or a 12 movement. So that's not going to work. Same thing as the problem here. You can't double eight those. So that's not going to work. So that is the nine. That is now an eight by the power of mag magnificences. That's now an eight. That's a nine. 
This is quite exciting now. This I will not deny it. That is now a th not a three. So this is a seven, eight pair, which means this is the three, is it? That's a three. That's a two. That's good. At least that pushes this up again. Um, now, this is a five to complete that column. Five is in one of those two cells. It would be lovely if it was here. That would make this have to be a three. Um, and the problem, okay, well, the only problem with this being nine is that now these two squares have got virtually no restriction on them. This is a number lower than nine <laughs> that allows this to be a number that's at least two. Wow. Oh. In fact, let's look at this. So we've got two, three, four, and uh, what is it? Two, three, wow, what is it? Two, three, four, and eight. Oh, oh no, the eight. Right, well, the eight must go here. Because if we put the eight there again, we've got too many thermos. So this is two, three, or four. So that's not eight. It's incredible, isn't it? It's just, it's still not giving up. It really does not want to relinquish its power over me. Right, this is a four, five, six triple. Ah, so that's a five by Sudoku. Oh, this is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that's a five by Sudoku and that's on the thermo. So it forces this to be a three. So it's got to be two different because of the funny rules. So that's a four. That's not a three anymore. Come on, please, please, please let me solve this. This Oh, this is a funny thermo. So that can't be a two. That's got to be a three. That's got to be a two. That's got to be a three, a four, a four, a three. That's a four now. So that's a four and that's a six. Um, this is a six by Sudoku. This is a two. Please. Uh, this is two or nine. This is a two, eight or nine, I think. Hang on, that can't be right, can it? Oh no. No, have I got a deadly pattern here? No, there's a nine here. Oh, thank goodness. Eight, nine, eight, seven, nine. That's good. Two. Yes, nine, eight, eight, seven. Two, yeah, nine, eight. <sighs> I did it. <laughs> An hour and 47 minutes. <sighs> that was hard. That was really hard. Um, not going to lie. That was hard. That's one of the hardest puzzles we've ever done or I've managed to solve on the channel or otherwise, I was completely hopelessly lost at the start. Very nearly turned off the video. Um, the video, the miracle Sudoku, this will not be. <laughs> because people will have to stay with it for too, too long in this impatient society to enjoy what Glipperal has made here. But that was absolutely stunning. I mean, let us just bathe in the reflected glory of the man, because to, to, to create that from that is, I don't understand. I just do not have the intelligence to understand how people think about things like this. It's hard enough for me, obviously, obviously it's hard enough for me to understand how to solve this, given how long that has just taken. Can you imagine coming up with it, let alone executing it with that sort of a plomb? It is mind blowing, mind officially blown. Glipperal, you, you, <laughs> you know exactly what you are. You are terrifying indeed, absolutely terrifying. But I better, I better get off and start. Um, trying to get uh, this video exported and uploaded because otherwise it won't hit, won't hit. I should make this a YouTube premiere actually, because this is the sort of thing that I'd love to see the comments in the chat about 
as I'm trying to wade my way through it. But what a puzzle. What an absolute joy. Thank you so much if you're still watching. I'm so sorry to take up so much of your time again. But that was a special one. Hardest puzzle of the year? Quite possibly yes. Oh, and thanks very much, Mark, for recommending it. Bye for now. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.